universal suffrage. With the lifestyles enjoyed by American women today, it is impossible to visualize the hardship women endured in the 1800s and early 1900s. At the beginning of the 20th century, women were seen as second-class citizens, having limited rights. Under the practice of coverture, married women did not have the legal right to own property or any rights and career choices, and any money that they earned belonged to their husbands. Married women had few individual rights. Even with the ratification of the 14th Amendment to the Constitution, which guarantees the protection of Americans' civil rights, women were not considered persons, even by the Supreme Court. For over 100 years, suffragists fought for a woman's right to have a political voice. In July 1848, the suffrage movement began with the Seneca Falls Convention, also known as the National Liberty Convention, which was led by Elizabeth Cady Stanton and Lucretia Mott. The convention was a forum for highlighting the inequalities of women politically, socially, economically, and in religious life. Stanton, coming from a politically involved family, believed that political pressure was necessary for improving women's rights and that having the right to vote was the weapon of change. Stanton, a force to be reckoned with, issued the Declaration of Sentiments, making the claim that women are equal to men. The women's suffrage movement would wane during the Civil War, but re-emerge with the passing of the 15th Amendment. The amendment granted voting rights for all U.S. citizens. However, only men were considered citizens. In 1869, the National Women's Suffrage Association was founded by Elizabeth Cady Stanton and another prominent suffrage leader, Susan B. Anthony. The NWSA took a stance against the 15th Amendment because it did not extend universal suffrage. The purpose of the group was to support the creation of a suffrage amendment. The organization adopted a state-by-state -state strategy. That same year, the Territory of Wyoming was the first to give women the right to vote. In the following decade, other states followed suit by giving women full voting rights. Known as the Anthony Amendment, the first attempt to pass a federal suffrage amendment was in 1878, but it was defeated in 1886. During the following three decades, known as the doldrums, the women's suffrage movement had few successful victories. Men and women suffragists continued to lobby local politicians and collected signatures on petitions to support their cause. However, these early conservative efforts did not bring about the changes that they envisioned. With the death of Susan B. Anthony, Carrie Chapman Catt was elected president of the NWSA. Suffragists began to enact different tactics to bring attention to their causes. Parades, pamphlets, and public demonstrations were popular methods. In 1908, the first women's suffrage parade attracted only 30-some participants. The following year, attendance grew to several hundred men and women. In May 1911, 3,000 people paraded through the streets of New York City. By November 1912, with the popularity of the movement spreading, 20,000 marchers demonstrated in a New York City parade. The parade tactic began to change in 1913, when marchers were divided into groups based upon their profession. This demonstrated the diversity and scope of the women's suffrage movement. Another tactic used to promote the suffrage movement involved the pageants, which were public demonstrations with theatrical elements to entertain audiences. Suffragists also distributed pamphlets and publications throughout the country. The National Woman's Party utilized media coverage of its events. Photographs provided a human element to their cause. Despite the success of parades, pageants, and print, leaders like Alice Paul and Lucy Burns turned to more radical tactics to shock Americans, politicians, and the White House. Beginning in January 1917, members of the National Woman's Party organized picketers to protest in front of the White House. The Silent Sentinels was a name given to the women because of their silent protesting. 
Throughout the two and a half year protest, women were harassed, arrested, and abused. On November 14, 1917, the date known as the Night of Terror, 33 silent sentinels who picketed the White House were brutally beaten, dragged, choked, and tortured by guards at the Occoquan Workhouse in Virginia. Suffragist Lucy Burns stood with her hands chained to the cell bars above her head for the entire night. Doris Lewis had her head smashed against an iron bed, knocking her unconscious. Her cellmate, Alice Kasu, suffered a heart attack, thinking Doris was dead. In protest to the harsh living conditions of the prison and the infested food, Alice Paul and others retaliated in protest of these conditions by initiating a hunger strike. This action had Paul committed to the psychiatric ward and forced fed through a feeding tube. Continued demonstrations, brutality against women suffragists, and hunger strikes depicted women as martyrs in the public's view. These actions strengthened their cause, pressuring President Woodrow Wilson to encourage Congress to pass legislation. In September 1918, the House of Representatives passed legislation. However, the Senate failed at passing an amendment. Members of the National Woman's Party continued extreme tactics, staging demonstrations, climbing statues, chaining themselves to fences, and burning watchfires in front of the White House. On May 21, 1919, the House of Representatives passed the amendment. Then, on June 4, the amendment was finally passed in the Senate. After years of struggle, the 19th Amendment, ratified on August 18, 1920, gave women the right to vote. The idea that women's suffrage would benefit society was largely responsible for a number of progressive-era reform efforts. Many women argued that their interests were not best served when only men were allowed to vote and that women's opinions and voices were just as important as those of men. As a result, through years of trials and tribulations, women victoriously won the right to vote. 